Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Burt Wagner and I'm excited to be able to share with you today's DBA Fundamentals Quick Tip. The main session is about to begin, but before that, I wanna talk about Statistics I.O. When performance tuning a query, it's important to be able to measure whether the changes you're making are actually improving the performance of that query or not. Relying on the elapsed time in something like SQL Server Management Studio isn't a really good way to test your queries because there's a lot of other factors that could affect how long a query runs, like what else is running at the server at the time. So if just measuring the elapsed time of a query isn't a real good way to test its performance, what can you do? My favorite way to do this is to just turn on the time and IO statistics. Once you turn those settings on, when you run a query, the messages tab in SQL Server Management Studio will be populated with different statistics that'll help us measure our query performance. Let's start by looking at the IO statistics. This section of the statistics will show all of the different pages that were read by your SQL query. A certain SQL query is reading from tempdb, that's gonna be denoted by either the work table or work file lines here. All of your other tables will just be listed by their table name. And for each one of those tables, you'll see these six values displayed. So let's go through what each one of these measurements represents. First up are logical reads. Logical reads are the number of eight kilobyte pages that SQL Server needed to read from the buffer pool to be able to meet the demands of your query, right? To return the data that you were asking for. This is a pretty good metric for the total amount of data that your query uses. The next measurement is physical reads, which are the number of pages that SQL Server had to read from disk up into the buffer pool. Hopefully SQL Server will only have to read pages from disk uh, the first time your query runs, and then in subsequent runs, right, it can hopefully reuse those pages that it already loaded into the buffer pool. The third measurement in our output are read ahead reads, which are also reads that are coming from disk into the buffer pool, but instead of just focusing on individual eight kilobyte pages, the read ahead uh, mechanism is an optimization, right, where SQL Server can read larger chunks of data up into the buffer pool in hopes, right, that it will need it. It's more efficient to read larger amounts of data, but SQL Server won't necessarily always use all of those pages that are read up into the buffer pool using the read ahead mechanism. And the final three measurements are pretty much exactly the same as the first three, but they're specific to lob data types. So those are things like your varchar maxes. So looking at these IO statistics is a nice way to compare how much work two different queries are doing. So with these IO statistics, my favorite thing to do is to focus on the logical reads. That way, if you're running two different queries, you can look and see how many pages of data those two queries need. And generally, right, the query that requires less data pages is gonna be faster because it's just having to handle less data. Trying to reduce the number of logical page reads in most cases is a, is a pretty good sign that you're heading in the right direction with your performance tuning. Now, the other thing we can look at are these time statistics that we turned on, and these appear below the IO statistics where we can see the CPU and the elapsed time that it takes for our query to run. So the CPU time represents how long our query actually spent on the CPU. Elapsed time represents more of your wall clock time, right? How long that query actually took to run. Now the important distinction between these two is that sometimes a query may run really quickly, right? Let's say on, in one second of CPU time, but if there's a lot of other work going on on your server, right? Maybe your query is getting blocked, that's gonna cause the elapsed time counter to go up while the CPU time counter is just gonna kind of stay the same because your query is not actually running on the CPU, it's waiting to run. And so since you can't always control everything else that's running on your server during you know, the time that you're trying to performance tune a particular query, using the CPU time will give you more consistent results to compare right between your two queries that you're running. And one important thing to kind of point out is that sometimes your CPU time is gonna be bigger than your elapsed time. And all that means is that your query probably ran in parallel, right? So that CPU time is a sum of the time the query spent on all of the CPUs that were used to process that query. So if it ran on four uh, cores, right, all of those times would be added up, summed up for the total CPU time. And those are IO and time statistics in a nutshell. Next time you performance tune a query, turn those time and IO statistics on and see if the changes you're making to your query are actually improving performance or not. So thanks for watching today's quick tip and the main session will begin shortly.